Yeah, it's your boy Dreams. I'm back once again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my saying. I think I say that in every video. <laughs> but yeah, um, hey, this part two right here, like I promised y'all, like I said, this part two to the last video, this is a war. You must know your enemy tactics. This is another good one. Like I said, I think it's going to go to part four. Um, God ain't even gave me no new no new information and stuff. He ain't give me no new knowledge. It's just from the stuff that he gave me the first time. There's so much of it that I think it's going to get to a part four. This part two right here. But it's real good. The, the information they give me, all of it is good. So if you ain't seen part one, you ain't seen the first one, go look at it. You know what I'm saying? But still look at this one right here because it's good. So let me pray real quick. Y'all know I always pray in my videos. I'm going to pray real quick, though. I just thank you, Father. I come before the throne right now. Father, thank you. I'm so thankful to be able to come into your presence, Father. We so thankful that we could just talk to the almighty one. But, that, but we don't even call you God. We don't have to say all this fancy stuff. You are Father. So, Father, we just thank you that we're just able to talk to you. You love us so much. And we just the recipients of your love. Thank you. And I ask you to give me wisdom. Pour your wisdom on me, Father, and pour your wisdom on them. Anoint me to do this video good and say anything that I haven't wrote in my notes, Father. Let me say it clearly for the people. Let them get it, grow up so much and be so much stronger to fight the devil. Give them power over the enemy and all the skills they need to win this war. I thank you and love you and receive these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I feel this power already. But yeah, yeah, like I said, I did an introduction last time. So I'm going to do another introduction this time um, and just tell y'all this. God let me hear the devil speaking the other night. And this time he said to me, right? It was the other night I heard the devil saying to me, he was saying, I'm distracting a whole lot of people and I'm getting so many of them. But you keep exposing me and getting in my way and I don't like it. Like the devil, I heard the devil voice clearly tell me that. He said, I'm distracting so many of them out there. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 only so many people I can reach. And so many people as an individual you can reach, right? But, but the people I am able to reach, he said, you exposing me and you telling them about me. And I'm sure my vision is going to be millions of people that are going to be watching these videos. Right now, it's it's not, you know what I'm saying, a whole lot of people that's watching them right now at the, at the moment. But it's okay. The people that is watching them, they're getting it. And I'm thankful for that. But he said, the, the devil just told me. I was laughing too. But I told him, that's my job though. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, well, that's my that's my response to him. Oh, well. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, that's my job. I'm supposed to expose you. I'm supposed to help you. I'm, I'm supposed to stop you. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to stop you. And that's what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? All God's people, we got to rise up and stop this, dev this devil, this beast. Stop him from getting all these people and distracting people. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? So, like I told him, that's my job. But I'm going to say, since the last video, the war on me personally, my battle with the devil is intensified. He definitely been coming at me way harder, though. You know what I'm saying? Because cause he said you exposing him. He said you exposing me. Right? So he coming at me way harder. But I'm getting to the point like David, y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? God gave me this revelation of David. When it was time for battle, David wasn't scared, though. David was like, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Because David was like, God with me. I can't lose. And that's what I'm like. When you grow up in God, when you grow up, grow up and grow up and get mature, 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 you you welcome to battle. You you kind of like it. You get to the point where he attacking me is because he know what I'm doing. He feel like I'm a threat. That's the word. He feel like I'm a real threat. You know what I'm saying? When the devil don't feel like you a threat, why bother them? I already got them. They ain't doing nothing. At the, in these days, I'm giving y'all the revelation. In these days, the devil is not messing with the people he already got so much. He coming for the church. He coming for the pastors. He coming for the apostles, for the prophets, for the evangelists, for the teachers. He coming for the people that's threats. That only makes sense, though. Like, when you think about it, it's a war. So it only makes sense to come to people that's... People like that's going to help them. You know what I'm saying? The people that's mature, that's going to go out there and help them. I got to get them. If I could distract them, they won't get helped. 
That's his mindset. So let's get into it. I'm going to give you all a little quick recap from the last video. You are in a war. Understand that. This is a war. And it's against the devil and his demons. And, and it's whether you like it or not. Whether you agree with it or not. Whether you accept it or not. It's a war. Understand that. This battle is fought in your mind. In your thought life. That's the battlegrounds for the devil. That's where he fight us at. In our minds. Right? But, but the Holy Spirit just said he can do stuff to the body too. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He can do stuff to the body. He can make you sick and all that stuff too. But the main battleground is here though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because even if, that's what the Holy Spirit just said to me. Even if he make you sick, it's how you respond to that sickness in the, in the mind. You know what I'm saying? You can accept the sickness or you can fight it. And you can, and, and you can overcome it through the blood of the, of the Lord and through speaking the word. So, the, the battlefield is fought in the mind, though. That's this where the battle is fought at, in your mind. The weapons of the enemy, right? The enemy's weapons is lies spoken to your mind. So that's what he do. He speak his lies to our minds. And the only way to win is by quoting God's word. So you must know the word. You have to know God's word to win. There's no other way you can win. It's some little things you can do for some temporary relief. You can praise. You can put on worship music. You can praise and praise because the enemy hates that. The devil hates to hear us praising God and hear this worship music, right? But it don't beat him, though, because he's at church all the time. The demons are sitting there at church all the time. Many of them, they even send people in the church. So it's not like that's beating him. He just They just don't like it. They don't like to hear it. I'm sure they cover their ears up. But it doesn't win. Praise doesn't win. It may give you some temporary relief and you feel better and stuff, but you can't win the war with, with, with music, with just singing, just singing praises to God. You have to use God's word. Because like I said before, when you speak God's word, knives come out your mouth. That's how you stab them. God said the sword of the spirit is the word of God. He didn't say singing or other kind of stuff. He didn't say fasting. He didn't say meditating. He didn't say none of that. He said the sword of the spirit, which you, your sword is only used to stab people and, and fight. So your only we weapon is a word of God, God's word. So that's in the last video. But check out the last video, too. Like I said, it's, it's a lot of good information. I'm giving you all the recap, but there's little details in there that's, that's good. Nuggets that we need because we're in a war. You need all you can for this war. It ain't no joke. Understand the enemy ain't no joke, though. Like I said before, we're giving them no praises. But that enemy is no joke. We can't beat him without God. Never think you can fight him head to head without God. You can't. It's, you, you, you ain't no match for him. So, so let me get into it. Now, this is just more of his tactics right here. He whispers his lies and watches how you react to see if you believed him or not. Because he can't read your mind. But he know he do know the thoughts he planted, right? So he 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 plants his thoughts and see how you react to him, right? First of all, let me say this: we know the enemy. I told y'all before, he don't chill. He not like us. He don't take vacations. He don't go to the beach. These demons, they don't go swimming. They don't drink mai tais. They don't party. They don't do none of that. All they do is stalk you. That's it. That's all the demons and the devil do is, is sit around and watch you, follow you everywhere you go. It's like I got dogs. Like my dogs always want to follow me everywhere. They way worse than that. Everywhere you go, when you're on the toilet, they watching you. Let me see what you're looking at on your phone. They, they every, When you're sleeping, they right here. I'm waiting till you wake up. I'm, I, I, they don't got nothing else to do. I'm telling y'all. Exposing the enemy. I'm exposing them for y'all. They have nothing else to do. They watch you all day, 24 hours a day. Everything you say, they know. They, they watching you. They looking, they listening, they studying you to see how I could get you. They have nothing else to do. So like I said, they plant their thoughts. The devil and his demons, they plant their thoughts and they see how you react to it. Let me see how you're going to react to what I said. So if they would say something like, Hey, he don't like you. 
right? Or she don't like you, right? Or they say like, they, they understand they know all the slang. Like I told y'all in the last video, they know every language. They not they got a supernatural mind. We not giving them no praise again, right? They are enemy and we hate them. We got permission to hate them, but we understand who we dealing with, right? They got a supernatural mind, so they know all the slang that we talk, all the slang. They like, yeah, bro, bro don't like you. Like, you know what I'm saying? They talk all like that too. They talk like that. So, so understand, this is what they say. They, they, they plant their thoughts though. They don't like you, right? They want to see how you react to it. And now you kind of frowned up or you kind of treating them some kind of way, different now. And, and they watch how you, they like, oh, he believed that. They believe that, right? It's a lie though. They just, they just make stuff up. They just start fights. They start confrontation with us for no reason. They evil, pure evil. They love us that fight each other and be arguing, have animosity, bickering. They like, that's their territory. They love all that. Or they'll say something like, they over there talking about you, right? They, you, you will see two people over there talking and they'll be like, they over there, they talking about you. And all they had to do is look your way or something right there. And you really believe it now. Oh, they over there talking about me, man. I, I ain't messing with them no more. You know what I'm saying? That's what they want. They want you to cut them off. They want y'all to be feuding with each other because the demons, that's what they do. You got to understand the demons are full of evil. They have zero love in them, no love, but they loyal to the devil. The demons are loyal to the devil because they scared of them. That's the only reason I thought about that. And I, I was talking to God about that. I'm like, why the demons don't just overthrow them? Right? Why they don't just, because Satan slapped them around. When, 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 he, when, they, when they come back from, he told you to go destroy their marriage. That's what Satan gave them orders to. Go destroy their marriage. They two loving each other, two powerful couples for God. Go destroy them. Or go make them sick. Or go make them fight each other. Whatever he signed you to do is bad. This devil tell him he the boss. The devil is their boss. And they come back and say, I couldn't do it. Sometimes he slap him around. Why you, why you couldn't do it? You know what I'm saying? He's evil. So I'm saying you got to understand that these people are pure evil. Like all they want to do is destroy us. So, so, so when they, like I said, like I, like, thank you, Holy Spirit. I was getting back to what I'm saying is that I'm wondering why they don't overthrow the devil is because he's stronger. He way stronger than all of them. He way smarter than all the demons. He, he He's stronger. That's why. So they scared of him. You know what I'm saying? But 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 what was, what was I saying? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, a lot of this stuff ain't in my notes. God is giving it to y'all. God love y'all so much. He loved me so much. He loved y'all so much that he, he telling y'all what's going on in the spirit with all these things. So like I said, he, he, that's what he's going to do. He wants us to bicker with each other, argue with each other. So how you win this one is you got to say, it don't matter if they talking about me. I don't even care if they talking about me. I don't care if they like me or not. I'm going to love them anyway. The devil cannot stand love. He hates to be around love. If you see you, you know what I'm saying? A couple hugging each other, couple coupled up, cuddled up, kissing and all this stuff. And just, you know what I'm saying? Real love, authentic love for each other. Like I love my husband. I love my wife. He hates that. He hates love. He hate it. It's like he can't, he's like, I can't stand that. Like, get them to break up. Stop all this lovey dovey stuff. He can't stand it. Right? So that's how you win. That's another tactic that God has given us. How you beat the devil is love. Love each other. That's why you say, love your enemies. Love them anyway, no matter if they're talking about me. I didn't had that happen to me at my job. I heard somebody talking about me, right? This was years and years ago, though. Like, it was almost, you know what I'm saying, when I was close to first starting at the job, right? And I heard them talking about me, right? I came around the corner and I heard them talking about me. They was laughing at me. And my my, my rea immediate reaction was the same way like everybody else. I'm kind of like, man, I ain't messing with them no more. They smile in my face, talk behind my back. But God started dealing with me. You got to love them. He said, look at you. You ain't loving them. Look at you. You only going to love the people that's nice to you or that don't talk about you. What about the people that don't like you that talk about you? I told you to love them. So I, I made up my mind. Then he was, he was developing me. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, so you got to make it. That's how you win that. When, when he tell you about other people, I'm telling, I'm giving y'all a powerful tool. God is giving y'all a powerful tool. How do you respond to hate? How do you respond when people don't like you? If they gossip about you, rumors about you, anything they doing, they not loyal. Anything they doing, love them anyway. Made up your mind. Don't have the worldly attitude of, I'm giving you the same energy you're giving me. No, no. I'm going to love you regardless. My mind is already made up because Jesus' mind is made up. Jesus' mind, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for killing him, for putting nails in his hands and feet and the crown of thorns on him, beating him so bad that they say he wasn't even recognizable. He didn't even look like a human. Like skin torn, torn off everything. He was leaking blood everywhere. It was hurting so bad. And he's what he say though. Why he hanging? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. That's that's him. When I start having these revelations of that, I said, man, I gotta get to that level. I gotta get to that level. We gotta get to that level. They killing him. And he's saying, forgive them, Father. Like he's telling Father, he's telling God to still love them. Forgive them. Still love them, God. That's hard. And you mean to tell me we just got people talking about us? Words? If the words don't hurt. Not if you let them, unless you let them hurt. But words don't physically hurt you. It's just words. They just talking. But still love them. I'm telling y'all, that take maturity. That take maturity. I'm telling you, you gotta conscious, you gotta consciously be working on that. The Holy Spirit gonna help you. He you see what he did to me? He reminded me. Love him. But he ain't gonna make me. He didn't make me. He can't make us do nothing. God can't make us do nothing. You know what I'm saying? He gonna tell us. That's the, the, the Holy Spirit job. I'm gonna remind you what you're supposed to do. I say the Holy Spirit is like a alarm clock. Uh, 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 get up. But you can push snooze and go back to sleep. You ain't got to he, he listen to him. So I'm, th that's a powerful key y'all got today. Love them. No matter what. If they talking about you, no matter what they did to you. If they cheated on you, you in the, you was married to him, you still love them. I'm not saying you got to deal with everybody. That's why we need the Holy Spirit, though. We need the Holy Spirit to tell us, like, should I still deal with this person? How should I deal with him? He ain't gonna, he ain't call us to be no doormats. I don't want to get that. I want to get that clear. He's not calling us to just let everybody just do anything to us and run all over us and just disrespect us and, and just take, he's not saying that either. Cause sometimes he will tell you, don't talk to them no more or don't talk to them for a year or six months or a season. He has said, give them a season and you don't even know how long it is. And after four months ago by, then he'd say, reach out to him. And you know what I'm saying? But he, it's, he always want to make us come together. He always want to make us love, have a bond, be at peace with each other is the word. He always wants us to be at peace. That's his goal. Holy Spirit always wants us to be at peace. So he's not suddenly telling you to just let people slap you and disrespect you. And no, nah, because ain't nobody going to just walk up to me and slap me or push me or get in front of me in line and all that. Like you ain't going to just disrespect me. I'm still a man. I'm not going to just let tolerate anything. But the goal is to love you, though. The goal is to be at peace with you. That's the goal of us as godly people is to be at peace. We come to bring peace to the world. The devil come to do the, all the bad stuff. We come to bring peace, though. So y'all know now love is the key, though. It's how you defeat this lie. When he tell, tell you something about somebody else, whether it's true or not, a lot of times going to be lies. Cause like he said, his, his tactics is lies. Right. So if he come with you with this lie and talking about somebody else, they don't like you and any of that, love them. Right, where, where I was at, love them anyway. So you have to reject his thoughts immediately or they would take root and grow and put you on his path to lack, doubt, anxiety, depression, and ultimately death. Right, you got to reject those thoughts immediately or they're going to take root. If they take root inside you, they get inside you and take root, that's when they begin to grow. Like you can't let that stuff like a tree. A tree got to grow roots first before it grows big and, and grows all these branches. You don't want his branches. You don't want the devil branches. What I just say they was, what God said, lack, doubt, anxiety, depression. 
and ultimately death. You don't want his stuff to take root in you. It's going to bring you to a bad place. Like, so you got to recognize his thoughts immediately. And, and, and he's and God is exposing him today. Then, you know, he's going to say this about people. He's going to try to get you frustrated with people, mad at people. You know what I'm saying? When he say stuff to you, it's going to make you scared, nervous. You know that when the devil say something to you, it's going to make you nervous and scared and, and confused and doubting. And I got anxiety. When, when you got these kind of feelings, you just check what I'm thinking. That's the first thing you need to know. What am I thinking to make me feel like this? Because thoughts produce feelings. It's your thought life that produces where you depress. Depression is a state of mind. It ain't something that you catch. You can't catch depression. Depression is something you thinking about. I'm thinking about my mom died. I just miss her. I miss her. You know, or they 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 broke up with me. You know, they broke my heart. Like it causes depression. Or oh, I'm broke. I'm so broke. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing. Look what I live at. Look, you know what I'm saying? It causes depression. So it's your thought life. We gotta check our thought life. What you thinking about? Think about what you're thinking about. Like, you know what I'm saying? I heard Jim Rohn say that. Stand at the, stand at the door of your own mind and, and, and don't let anything just come through in your mind. Picture yourself, picture yourself in your own mind. You can close your eyes and picture yourself standing, in a, a little you, a little mini you, standing in front of your own mind. And, and you just like, you blocking the thoughts. Like, he's saying, you're always going to be broke. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't make it. You got to be like, uh-uh, I ain't stepping that. Like, that's the devil. That's the devil. God ain't going to tell you you ain't going to make it. Your father loves you. He ain't going to tell you. I said in the last video, everything God says to you energizes you. It encourages you. It makes you happy. It makes you full of joy. It gives you peace. It blesses you in a good way. Everything God says. So stand at the, guard, at the door of your mind and block his thoughts. You cannot let none of them take root. I'm telling you, get rid of them and you get rid of them with God's word and you counter it with God's word. Some he say, say some God say, get it out there. Boom. Throw that away. I'm telling you, if we got a healthy, good thought life. Our life going to be good because stuff going to happen anyway. You, you can get a flat tire in your car. Everybody going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Stuff going to happen. Your lights going to go out in the house. The, the, the toilet going to break down. We all going to face some stuff, but we just, even in those situations, I trust God, God. Help me to get this toilet fixed. Help me to get this tire. You know what I'm saying? Like, God going to take care of you. He went, We got the Almighty. We win. He love us. So call upon God on, on every situation. Call on your father. And this is the last one. This is a powerful one right here. This is the last tactic that I'm going to give y'all. But, but before I get to that, I'm going I'm to say this. The devil goal and objective is simple. And it never changes. He never changes tactics and all that. He may change the tactics and way I, the way I go about doing it, but the end goal never changes. And who knows it? Y'all should know this. It's what the devil came to do. I know the mature believers know. What, what did the devil come to do? Kill, steal, and destroy. That's it. Everything he do is hinges on that. I'm going to kill you, steal, destroy. I want to destroy your life. I want to destroy your marriage. I want to steal your peace, steal your joy, kill you, kill your kids, kill your joy. He, that's all he do. Everything he does is for that reason. So this is why we hate him. And I'm glad God gave us permission to hate him. We can hate that devil. Like we can't hate people though. Never. You can never hate people. So you should never say that. I hate such and such. Never. That's not what we're here to do. You're not doing that. And, and that's not making God happy. It's actually making God not happy with you. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like I said, everything he do. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and life in abundance. So we must choose the life Jesus is offering. Or the one the devil is offering. And this is the war. This is the war. You, you must accept. Jesus said, I came that you may have life. Look at it. Jesus wants you to have life. That means he don't want you to die early and all that. He, don't, he said in life in abundance, abundance of peace, abundance of joy, money too. Like, don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. He wants to have money too. If you really get to know God, if we really get to know God, he going to bless you with the money too. 
He going to tell he ain't going to most of the time he going to give you an idea how to get the money. That's God's blessing. I'm going to tell you what you need to do, but it's your job to do it though. Like, you know what I'm saying? But he came that we may have life. That's what Jesus came for. The enemy come for kill, steal and destroy and destruction. You got to choose it's up to us though. Which one you going to choose? You going to ride with Jesus or you going to bleed the devil? It's, it's our choice. And it's the last one right here. It's good though right here. It's powerful right here. It's powerful. Look, understand this, y'all. One of the devil best tactics is this one. Excuse me. Excuse me. You see how he's trying to get me? He said, I don't want you to tell him that. So I'm causing you to burp and stuff. <laughs> he can't stop me though. Look, he can't stop what God doing. He can't. Cause I'm because I'm I'm with God. One of the best. One of the devil's best tactics is this one. A illegal and unequally yoked sex bond, which is called a soul tie. This is his almost strongest one in the entire world. It's called illegal sex bond, which is called a soul tie. I know many of y'all heard of that. Soul ties. Understand this. This is very real. The word soul tie is not in the Bible, right? But, but, but it's still true. Just like the word rapture is not in the Bible. The word rapture is not in the Bible, but it's still true. We still going to get raptured. So understand this is very, very much true. And God about to prove it and show it to us. This is the devil working to tie you to someone. Right? That, yes, my brother called. I'm going to have to call him back. Call him from jail. But look, I know he's probably going to call me again, so I'm kind of expecting it. But it don't stop. It ain't distracting us. Look, what I'm saying is this. We was talking about the illegal sex bond, which is called a sex tie. A sex bond, right? It's illegal, though. This is the devil working to tie you to someone through sex. And this will cause you so much confusion, right? This is the devil working to tie you to somebody. That's why it's called a soul tie. When we have sex, we enter into each other bodies, right? We doing it. But the thing about it, that is good if you married. It's a great thing. It's a, it's an enjoyable experience. It's a great, great, good thing. Sex. It's a good thing if you marry, but if not, it's illegal sex. And it's tying you to the person. See, if you married and you're doing it God's way, you love God, the woman, the man love God. We come together. We tie, we tie to each other. That's good. That's a good thing. That's why you say, don't be, be equally yoked. Don't marry an unbeliever. God say, don't marry an unbeliever. If you a believer, you believe in Jesus. They don't. You tie yourself to that. That's not good. So that's what he's doing. That yeah, I knew he was gonna call back and stuff. He it's kind of important, but but yeah, I'm gonna get back to him. But um, but yeah, like I said, that 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 soul tie right there. This is the main one that the devil is using. It. He been using this for centuries. He didn't destroy Samson with this. Think about that. The enemy destroys Samson, the strongest man who ever lived. The man that can just pick up a tree from its roots and, and, and swing it. The man that broke a whole castle down with his, with his hands, bare hands. The strongest man ever to walk the planet. Samson destroyed with what? Women, sex, chasing sex, chasing the wrong type of women. So this is what the devil is using in these days, and he's very, very effective. But but we exposing him. We breaking it right now. Right? It causes confusion, though. That's the thing. When you're having sex with somebody you're not supposed to be having sex with, all of a sudden you're going to find yourself confused. Watch, pay attention. If you ever do that. If you do it, you're not supposed to be doing it. But now you're aware of it. It's like, why am I confused? Because you have an illegal sex, you're breaking God's law and his ways. Right? Once you have an illegal sex, you're not married, 
That's what illegal. That's what makes it illegal. You're not married. We're supposed to be married. Like I said, you will start to like someone who you don't really know. And most of the time, this person don't even like you. And you find out you don't even like them either. That's what's happening. You find out after you have it start having sex with somebody and you got a soul tied to them. Now you'll look this, this how that works in the spirit realm. You go inside somebody, y'all having sex with each other. Now, now when you're doing that, like I told y'all before, the demon's able to get inside you, right? So they got, so all these demons are inside people. It's different. So many de demons, it's anger demons, it's procrastination, it's lazy demons, it's confusion demons, it's schizophrenia demons, it's paranoia demons. I'm talking about, we, I could go on and on and on with how many demons it is. So when you're having sex with somebody, you take on their demons. They they able they got legal access into you. So now they come inside you, and that's how you confuse. And that's how you thinking. Now they got you thinking, oh, I, I really like this person. Oh, I love them. Like, you know what I'm saying? They come over and y'all get in the bed and get busy. Right? Afterwards, you feel, oh, you know what I'm saying? That, that's my boo or that, that's my bae and, and, and all that. You feel like that. You don't even know them. You don't even really know them. Y'all just coming over and doing that. And now, the, see how the devil's confused you. He confused you and got you thinking you, you in love or they really like you or they really mess with you. They don't. It's just to get their rocks off. You don't even know that person. And you, you find out later, you don't even like that person. That's what's happening in the world. It's too much of that. It's too much going on in that. We got to stop this stuff. And I'm, and, and I'm a man. Right. So I got I got a lot of understanding because I, I didn't did it so many times myself. You know, what I'm saying tell the truth and shame the devil, expose him. Right. So I didn't fornicate it so many times. Right. I asked God to forgive me and he erased it like it never happened. Understand that when you ask God to forgive you for something, he erased it like it never happened. So if you bring it up to God, he's like, I don't even know what you're talking about again. So understand that that's another Jew that God gave y'all. Understand, ask God to forgive you for your sins. Ask him. Say, God, forgive me for the fornicating I did, for stealing, for, for cussing folks out, for, for, for all the stuff I did, Father. Forgive me. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. You promised to forgive me. You say that to God, because he did. Say, you promised to forgive me. You, you, he loved when we put his promises back in his face. He loved that, because he don't lie. He going to forgive you. And like I said, is he going to blot it out? Like it never happened. So the next time you sin would be the first time sinning to God. That's a, that's a, that's a thing that the devil do not. He's so mad. I feel it again now, but oh, well, again, he mad. Cause I'm telling y'all that he don't want people to know that. Cause he hope he make you feel guilty about the stuff you do. He, he the one that's, that's the, that's called the accuser of the brethren. He accuses all day before God. Look what they did. You see what they did yesterday. They was having sex last night. Look at them lying. Look at them. All That's all he do is accuse us. So, so you ask God to forgive you. And you believe that he forgive you. You believe it. You believe it because he said it. You know what I'm saying? Not because we deserve it. We don't deserve it. But he do it anyway. That's how loving our father is. So ask him to forgive you for that. And he's going to blot it out. But I'm saying this one is serious. This one is serious right here. This was happening. This is the cause of so many broken homes, right? And the reason we don't trust people. Y'all see me looking at my notes and stuff. This is the reason why. It's so many broken homes with one pair of houses because we're not doing it God's way. How many people just got mom in the house? And that's what We know that's what most of the time. It's just mama, daddy gone. Because they didn't know each other. They didn't love each other for real. They didn't take the time to really get to know each other. They didn't do it God's way. So it's a result. It's a penalty when we don't do it God's way. And I'm saying it this way because I want y'all to really get it. I'm saying it again with the passion. I'm not saying it to be hard because I just admitted I did it so many times. So I'm going to turn around and be hard on y'all when I didn't did it so many times. So it's not. I'm not going hard on y'all. I'm not because I'm not. God made my heart so soft and so gentle. But I'm saying it so passionately so y'all can get this. Stop it. We got to stop this stuff. 
It's too much of it going on. It's causing too many broken homes and too many. You know what I'm saying? This is it's called lust, right? It's called lust. That's what simply is called. And it's causing heartbreaks. There's so many people heartbroken, heartbroken. And we don't trust people. That's why we like, I don't trust all men like this. See, when you start getting into that. All men, how you going to say I'm like that? How you going to say the people at church like that? You don't know them, but you basing it off what you seen. You basing it off that, that, that hurt that you experienced and the hurt that your friend, your girlfriend, your homeboy experienced. You seeing all you, you calculating all that and you basing and you, and you feel like all everybody the same. You feel like ain't nobody faithful out here. Ain't nobody being faithful. That's not true. It's people being faithful. But I, in my opinion, from what I see, it's the mature godly people. I mean, it could be people that don't believe in God that's faithful. I'm sure it is some out there. But in these days with the devil swarming and all this sex going on and, and twerking and, and you know what I'm saying, sexy red type of stuff and, 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 and just promiscuous, wild, showing your body only fans. It's wow in these days. It's out of control. So it just makes it, it makes it hard to be modest. But the mature people, the people that just make up their mind first, like I said, it's starting your mind. You make up your mind. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing that. I'm not being like that no more. I'm not being wild like everybody else. I'm not going to be trying to show people my butt on Facebook and Instagram and, and, and bust it open. And I'm not doing all that. I'm not trying to smash all these chicks and all that. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not on that, that like they say, that type of time. I'm not on that. I'm on God's way. I'm finna, I'm striving to do things God's way. You know what I'm saying? Because that's going to lead me somewhere good. Where it is going to lead you to? All this sex. All this having one night stands and quick. Like, where did it, where's the end game for that? What's the end game? Just, from you, you, you more promiscuous, you more wild. And lust is never satisfied. You can never satisfy lust. It's going to keep wanting more, 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 and more. Sex, sex, sex. It's going to, so you, we got to get out that cycle. And the devil is telling me right now, the devil is saying, he's saying, you telling them about this, but it's still going to be hard for them to get out of it. And this time he's telling the truth though. You see what I'm saying? He's telling me that because he want to antagonize me. He want he he want to he, he he do that. He know he know me. I love I love the people so much. I want to see y'all walking with God. He know that, so that's why he try to antagonize me. They ain't gonna get it. They still going they still gonna be having sex tonight tonight tomorrow. They ain't gonna never stop. That's what he trying to tell me, right? But I'm fighting against him. He my enemy, and I'm giving them the information so they know. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not out here with. You know what I'm saying? Nah, ain't none of that. Ain't none of this. It's only Mary. It's only to my wife I'm going to have sex with. That's it. That's it. Ain't going to be no soul ties and all this. And you got to make up your mind and do it. Do that too. I'm telling y'all, God give us a crown in heaven for that. It's a reward for that, for obeying God. It's a reward for everything you do for God. Everything you do, God want to bless us. He our father. He nicer than any other father. He nice. He want to bless us. So if you stop doing that for him, he going to bless you. He going to bless you with a lot of stuff. So understand this. So this is what God tells us. This is why God tells us to wait for marriage. Because you really get to know the person without having sex, doing it God's way, waiting. This why now understand now. I used to really be like that. God, why we can't just have sex? It don't seem like we, we two adults consenting. I used to be like that. Like, it don't seem like there's no harm, no foul. But now, excuse me again. But now I understand why. I understand why the soul ties. How the demons are able to get inside. I'm telling y'all, if the demons get inside you, they got to be cast out. I said that before. Only way you can get a demon out of you, once they get in, they got to be cast out. And it's not many people casting out demons. You rarely almost never see that in life. You almost never see nobody casting out demons. So that means they in you. Once they get in you, they got to be cast out. And how many times you had sex? They in there. You That's the opportunity to get in. You think they ain't in you? They inside you. And they got more influence over you. 
Now I can make it stronger. That love spirit stronger on you. You know what I'm saying? That's what they do. I'm telling y'all. This stuff is serious. This is super serious. We got to stop. We got to control ourselves. One of the fruits of spirit is self-control. You got to control yourself. God ain't going to stop you. What do you think God going to come down and say, don't go to their house tonight? Like, don't get in that bed. He will, though. He will say that. He'll remind us. And the Holy Spirit is the same way. He'll give us the feelings. He'll give us the strength. You will feel him trying to stop you to go from over there. But you fighting it. You just like, I made up my mind. I, I, want, I want what I want. And it's, it's repercussions for that, though. It's bad punishments for that. This is right. right. So I understand, like I said, why God wants to wait. The soul ties, the confusion, the broken homes, the single parents, the heartbreaks, the, the kids growing up like this because of that. You don't trust nobody. It's a lot of repercussions from us just having sex. Lust, fornicating. So we got to stop this stuff. This is the devil tactic, though. He keeping everybody in this circle. Strip clubs. Wow. Party life. Turned up. Young, wild, free. All that. That's his game. He loved that. You got, Get out that circle, though. Get out that cycle of that. Don't be turned. Don't be, you know what I'm saying, in a sexual way like that. You know what I'm saying? Don't be, get out of that. Make up your mind. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my husband. I'm waiting for my wife. That's it. So I can have sex. That's it. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a battle for sure. But the, the results, going. you're going to love the results when you do get married. When you do get married, you're going to love it. This right way will get you to really know them and see their, their real intentions and be able to see the real them clearly, right? If you wait, if you do it God's way while you date, if you ain't married right now, that means you're pretty much dating or you're in a relationship, right? So if you is and you having sex, if you're in a relationship, you having sex, stop. This is what God is telling you. Stop. Tell that person. I tell women this all the time. This is what I tell women mostly, though, because it's mostly men coming at them like that, right? Men is the one that's always initiating sex, always wanting sex so bad. Women do, too. You know what I'm saying? But it's men that's aggressive with it. You know what I'm saying? For the most part. So I tell women this. Just stop having sex. Just, just no, no. When, when you dating somebody, when you just meet somebody, tell tell that man this. I'm waiting to marriage till I have sex. Right? I'm not having sex until I'm married. And you stand on that. Right? You stand on that. You let them see that. You're going to be able to weed out all the, the dudes that just want sex. Because the majority of them do in this world. Most of men just want to smash. That's it. That's all they want. After I get what they want, they done with you. You know what I'm saying? I just call you again when I want that. So as a woman, I'm giving y'all the game on this one. Stand on that. You're going to be able to see who really like you or not. If a man still stay around after that, he really like you. He into you. But we just, just keep it going, though. That's why you get to know them. You get to know them. You get to see the real them. Without the soul tie, the sex bond, illegal sex bond. Like, it confuses you. You don't know no more. The demon's inside you. The demon's in the midst of what y'all doing now. Right? So you you wait and you get to know them. You're talking to them. You ask them about themselves and all that. You find out about that person without that. And you will get to see the real them. You will know if it's your husband or your wife or not. Like, without that. But if you having sex, you're confusing it. It's illegal. Repent for it. Like I said, ask God to forgive you and, and move on for it from it. But once you have this soul tie, the enemy has legal rights to us. Right? He got legal rights to get you. Because you playing in his backyard. You playing in the devil back. If you go in the devil backyard, he going to hurt you. Right? He going to hit you with a bat. He going to get his dog to bite you. His snake to bite you. He going to shoot you. If you in the devil backyard, the meanest person ever, the most evil, wicked, vile you know what I'm saying? Hateful dude. This dude ain't no joke. He hates you. Understand that. He absolutely hates you. If you if you give him legal rights, he, he going to drag you through the mud. Right? He going to get you. Because you're doing, he said, you're doing my activity. God said, y'all can't do that. So when you having sex illegal, you're doing my activity. Now I got access to you. You in my backyard. He going to get you. Disease, confusion, Heartbreak, he's going to get you with something. So what he do is 
He keep putting the wrong person for you. He keep putting the wrong person constantly on your mind. And he will bring, he'll bring some good memories of y'all together in your mind to cause you to miss them and return back to them. So he can keep you distracted from God through this person. He going to keep up bringing up these memories. He, he can flash these memories to your mind. Remember, that's where he play at. He speak to your mind. And if you get inside, he really can bring these memories to your mind. A good sex night that y'all had sex. It was good. He, you felt good. He'll bring that back to your mind. He'll bring some time. Y'all was watching TV and laughing. He'll bring that stuff back to your mind to get you to be missing that person. Now you feel like, dang, I really loved him. I really missed him. No, it's they bad for you. You got to understand this. They are bad for you. Only thing y'all had in common was illegal sex. You don't really know them. You don't really like them. Take away the sex then what y'all got. Sit down there and talk. You're going to be, you're going to find out I don't really even like you. You sit down and talk to him. Have it, have it to heart to heart with him. Tell him about your, your goals, your interests and all that. They might say, I don't even care about none of that. It's just sex. So stop that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think this video was going to go this long. I got a couple more. I got a couple more. Um, It might go to five the way this is going. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going to three and four, part three. But this is this is very good information on this. Watch it again, y'all. We got to stop. We got to stop with the sex stuff. That's important one. Stop. I know it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a fight. Your flesh going to be saying, I want what I want. But you got to control it. Self-control is a fruit of the spirit. We got that. It's already, if you believe in Jesus, that spirit is already in you. Self-control. You got to just tap into it and get stronger in that. And be like, no, I'm waiting. No, I'm waiting from now on. Like, I'm finna wait. And if you do slip, I'm human like y'all. And God is so loving beyond what we know. He is not hard. He not tough. We, we fornicate all the time. We do so many sins all the time. And he still love us. He still welcome us with open arms. He don't like the sins, but he still love us. So he's saying, if you do fall, you just repent and you get back up and you try not to never do it again. As simple as that. Ain't no reason to beat yourself up, but make up your mind. It all starts here. Remember, the battle is here. Is what you make up your mind. Most people ain't even made up their mind. They're going to wait till they marry. I almost never heard nobody say that in life. You never hear nobody saying that. You look, go look on Facebook. Go look on Instagram. You ain't going to see nobody saying, I'm waiting till I get married to have sex. You ain't going to see them posts. Never. Almost never. Nobody even thinking like that. So God is using me right now to put that in your brain. And from now on, you thinking like that now. A new goal. A new mission. I'm waiting till I'm married. And even if you're in a relationship, you tell your person you're in a relationship with, I got to stop. For God. Because of God, I'm trying to do it God's way from now on. I know we've been doing it so many times, but now I'm stopping it. I'm trying to do it God's way. So, like I said, this is a war. The enemy is using that sex right there. He's using that to get you, to keep you in his backyard, to keep you away from God. He's using that. You got to break out of that. You got to break out of that. That's sex one. That's, that's why you had me. I only said two points today. And I knew that was going to go long. And this video went way longer than what I thought. But it's okay. It's good. I think it's, I know it is. It's good information. It's God talking throughout this whole thing. It's my voice. And sometimes it'd be my ideas. But most of the stuff be God. It'd be God telling me to do it. So it's God inspired. It's God anointed. It's, it's the anointing on this video. It's blessed. So listen to it again. Share it. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what y'all think about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I love to hear the comments. I love to hear the feedback and stuff like that. Even if you disagree with me about something, you know what I'm saying? Tell me. But I know this stuff is from God. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm not, I don't be concerned about it. I'm gonna love you regardless, you know? So yeah, understand this is a war. The war, the battlefield is your mind. The devil tactics, what he uses lies. The only way you can win is God's word. So make sure y'all open up the Bible. Read. Like I keep, I can't stress it enough. Read. Open your Bible. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Read. Read 1 John. Read Mark. Read Hebrews. 
Read Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. Read the 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Read these books. I'm telling y'all, you need it. It's your only way to fight against that devil. I love y'all. Be blessed.